The rising geopolitical tension between Israel and Iran is being felt throughout the entire risk asset market right now. News about the increasing escalation between the two parties resulted in an 8.5% drop in Bitcoin late last Friday night. Total cryptocurrency market cap dropped over 10%, resulting in over $700 million in longs being liquidated in the last 24 hours. In today's video, we're going to go over how the recent events may continue to have an effect on the price action of Bitcoin, as well as the critical position of most altcoins right now. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess, and as a channel, name suggests it's all about crypto trading and technical analysis so if you're all about that or you'd love to learn hit the like button and subscribe to the channel Alrighty, guys last night was an absolute bloodbath this is the drop that i'm talking about here that was an 8.5 percent drop for bitcoin every single market was affected even the share market we can see here s p 500 had a nearly two percent drop which is huge for such a big market and all coins in particular got absolutely devastated so if we have a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap for all coins we saw a nearly 16 percent drop yesterday which is the biggest drop for all coin market cap that i have seen in a very very long time even higher market cap altcoins like Solana saw a nearly 20% drop just yesterday from the news. Um, and so it's really not looking good, guys, especially moving so close to the halving event. We're only seven days away. It would be ideal for us to be seeing these altcoins start to gain some more strength and the total cryptocurrency market cap of altcoins um, or even including Bitcoin and Ethereum be creeping upwards. But we'll touch more about that on in a little bit. For now, let's dive into Bitcoin. So immediately after the 8% drop, Bitcoin actually recovered pretty quickly. So you guys can zoom in here, even on the five, five minute chart, we can see that the massive flush back downwards was absorbed up very, very quickly. So around these levels here at $65,000 or this huge range of support, 65.3 to 65.8, there was a lot of buying volume and it pushed the price right back upwards. And on the four hour time frame, we even got a candle close above $67,000. So that's this local level support here um, created by those three validation points. And you can also see it on the VRPV. We also continued to validate the high time frame uptrend. So it's still intact. The uptrend that's been here since the 6th of March and has over four points of validation now, we managed to keep the uptrend intact. So despite the negative news that's happening right now, the increasing tension and geopolitical risks and also the um, current economic news that's happening, which has all been pretty bearish, despite all of that, the buyers are still pushing above the sellers. We still There's still a lot um, of buying volume in the market and it's still pushing the price back upwards. So overall, the uptrend is still intact. The problem is that it's still looking very, very weak. And the position that we're in right now, we have a very high risk of potentially losing that uptrend. And upon losing that uptrend, losing these levels of support and going as low as $60,000. So let's zoom in a little bit and talk about the one hour time frame and what's happening here. So we've got our main level of resistance on the short time frame, and that is at 67,300 to 67,600. And upon getting that bounce from support at $67,000 down here, the inability to push past this short time frame range of resistance and a correction back down to test that high time frame uptrend suggests that the price action is looking really, really weak. Even though we bounced and even though we absorbed a lot of the selling pressure here, this is a very low range for the buying volume to exist. It should have pushed the price back upwards and we should be continuing to see that upwards trajectory, but we're not. So because of that, there is a really strong likelihood that if we get that four hour candle close below this trend line here, so we're about two hours away from that. If we get that four hour candle close below that trend line, there is a very high chance of us losing these levels. So let's talk about the circumstance of that and what's going to happen if we lose this uptrend. So just to clarify, when I say losing an uptrend, I mean getting a four hour candle close below that uptrend. So these liquidity wicks are fine. We can see them and they're pretty common. They're going to always happen when we have, you know, any sort of massive shift in the market. But as long as we're seeing the absorption push us back above that uptrending range of support, the uptrend is still intact. So getting a four hour candle close, the very first thing that I would be looking for is these ranges of support over here. So I've labeled all the high time frame ranges here for you guys. And the main one that we're looking for in terms of support is 65.3 to 65.8 thousand dollars. If we lose that uptrend, we have a very high chance of testing that base of support. And if it does not hold, and we also lose our sell side liquidity level, so we get a candle close below the sell side liquidity level, we have officially confirmed a move 
into this range here. So that exists from 60,000 to 65.8, which means that the largest correction that we'll see would be another 10% drop, right? So from where we currently are at around 66,000, that drop to 60,000 as the base of support is about a 9.2% move. So that would still be a very devastating drop. And that's worst case scenario. Maybe we go to the top of the range at 60,000.8. That's still a 7% drop. Regardless, just moving into this range would not be very good, guys. If you guys remember my very last video, I divided this massive consolidation range that Bitcoin was traveling in, in into three main ranges. We have our bullish range, which is increasing our ch chances of getting this breakout here. And going back into price discovery, we have our neutral range. So that's right in between these two ranges. And it's still healthy consolidation as long as we're above the uptrend. But now we're starting to see the opposite of that. So we're moving into the bearish range and we're potentially losing our high time frame uptrending range of support. So it's not looking very good overall. And we really need to get that candle close above um, this level here at $66,000. So let's talk about what's to, what's going to happen if we do that and what to look out for in terms of future price action if we get that candle close above this level of support and we manage to bounce from here. So in terms of a move back upwards, if we get a really nice strong bounce here at $65,000 and we go back above this high time frame uptrend, what we'll need to look at is the very first range of resistance over here. So that is at 67.3 to that $67.6 thousand dollar range, right? So we need to break above that level that we most recently rejected around from in order to see us finally test our next high time frame range of resistance. So as you guys can guess, that is that $69,000 level here. It was our prior all time high and it is a very significant level for us to break back above, right? If we go on to a high time frame chart, for example, a daily chart, we can see just how critical our current position right now is. Sorry, there's a lot of drawings on it. But if we don't bounce here, we can see just how devastating that breakdown from this pattern would be, right? We move right into those next levels of support and that is all the way down here at around $60,000. So that would be a very move back, very big move back downwards. So that bounce, we should be looking for getting a bounce back above a high time frame range of support in order to really kind of safely secure a position back above the uptrend. So 69K is a very critical level for us to be looking for in terms of that bounce. And then after that, we have developed a very strong level of resistance here from 71,000 to 71,400. So this is this short time frame range of resistance and it has been very, very strong. You guys can see every single time that we reject from it, we seem to be developing lower lows as well. So this first rejection to this one, it doesn't create a clear trend line, but you guys can see just how devastating these rejections are. So we really need to see a break back above that range of resistance to start seeing any tests of this downtrend and a potential breakout of the pennant formation. Zooming into the one hour time frame, we can see that in order to break back above this high time frame range of resistance here at $69,000, what we should be looking for is first a break of this RSI downtrend. So that's going to tell us, it's a leading indicator, it's going to tell us before we break it um, that we have enough strength in the market, we've gained enough buying volume um, to push the price back above this high time frame range of resistance. When we bounce as well, we should also be looking for a print of some bearish exhaustion here on the market side for B. You can see right now on a red, on a one hour time frame, we're printing red dots. So we're not quite seeing bearish exhaustion just yet, and the price is still struggling to push back upwards. It is a lagging indicator though, so it'll tell us after we bounce whether or not the bounce was actually successful. But those are the two indicators to be looking for right now in terms of a move back upwards. So overall, it's not looking that great. The momentum, um, specifically the RSI, is just not looking very strong just yet. We're not really seeing a bounce. We can zoom in a little bit more to try and find some strength on the shorter time frames. We can see on the 15 minute chart, we still we're, we're starting to test the major move, the momentum that took us through the major move but we're not quite there yet. So it's still not looking that great. Um, and we are in quite a critical position right now, but that's enough of Bitcoin. Let's go on to altcoins because as critical as Bitcoin is looking right now, I don't think it is looking as bad as altcoins. So we know from the recent crash that altcoins really, really got wrecked. And when we can see altcoins 
dropping as much as 30%, 50% when Bitcoin's only moved 8%. We know that Bitcoin dominance is creeping up. If we take a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, it really shot upwards yesterday, went all the way up to 56.2%. So it hasn't been that high since before April 2021. So it hasn't been a, this high for a very, very long time. And generally what Bitcoin dominance tells us is that overall confidence in the cryptocurrency market is dropping or increasing. And so when Bitcoin dominance is increasing, we know that confidence in the overall cryptocurrency market cap, so all coin included, is dropping, right? So then Bitcoin is the main investment option. People are taking their money out of all coins, out of smaller tokens, all that kind of stuff. And that is why when we take a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap of all coins, we see such a steep drop from yesterday in comparison to just to what Bitcoin did, right? All coins really, really got wrecked. Now, this becomes a really serious problem when we take a look at the position that we're in right now. So this key level here, this threshold, $606 billion is or was a bullish trigger point for altcoins, right? We saw on the 26th of February, when we broke above this threshold here, we started to see altcoins really have some significant rallies and significant rallies that have pushed them above very, very high timeframe ranges of resistance. So we were starting to see the behavior that we're looking for coming up to the halving. So coming up to the halving, we want to see altcoins having small rallies to be able to, to break above key resistances in preparation for reaching all-time highs in the bull run you know, to have their subsequent powerful rallies. And we were seeing that for a little bit. Take a look at Solana. We'll go back to Solana as that example. 26th of February, we see it break above this key threshold level of resistance, right? We can see that level of resistance has existed since the 20th of September, 2021. Very long, very high time frame, range of resistance. Broke above that level of resistance and had a 45% rally. Right. Similarly to Gala, we can see on the 26th of February here, we broke above that key threshold range of resistance and we shot all the way back up to, I don't know, how much is that? <laughs> Let's take a look. That is an 86% rally, right? So that level on the total cryptocurrency market cap signifies a key range of resistance for a lot of altcoins. And we can see that from the recent price action, all coins have really gotten slaughtered and we are once again testing this base, this threshold as a level of support. Going back to those example altcoins, we can see Gala is back down at this base of resistance, back at that threshold and potentially losing that threshold. Same with Solana, we are in danger of losing a very key high time frame uptrend as well as that threshold of support. So it's definitely something to look out for guys. We are in a really critical position with altcoins right now. We really need Bitcoin to hold that $65,000 level of support that it's currently holding and we really need it to bounce here because only then are we going to drop Bitcoin dominance a little bit after Bitcoin rallies, altcoins rally, Bitcoin dominance increases. So we need Bitcoin to rally a little bit or bounce, see a little bit more strength from Bitcoin so that we can get a full on bounce from this range. If we don't and we drop below 606 billion, that would be a pretty big warning sign for me, um, especially considering where we're at in the four year cycle right now. So it would be definitely something to look out for coming up to that date. And I wouldn't be using this drop as a um, opportunity to accumulate a bunch of altcoins until we see a really strong bounce from this level here, maybe on the daily chart or something like that. Alrighty guys, that is all the analysis I have for you today. It's definitely a very interesting time to be in the market. Comment down below what you guys think about the recent price action. If you enjoyed today's video or you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel down below. And if you want to see more of my content, I do have a free Telegram channel where you guys can get daily Bitcoin updates as well as crypto and economic news. If you're interested in my VIP channel, you can check out more details over here. VIP gives you exclusive access to my personal trade setups, including entry points, stop losses and targets, as well as trade justifications and a risk management and trading journal. If you are a trader don't forget to sign up down below to BitGet and BingX to get 15% off your trading fees. I hope you guys have a really great week and I will see you next time. Bye!